You know what I should do is awesome stuff that nobody's ever seen me do and not video it. That's that's what I should do. That's what I've done the last 36 hours. So anyway, so you've heard me mention before that uh, I've done some welding in the past when I was a kid and uh, not since. And so yeah, I'm welding on the chopper now. So I texted the wife last night and said, some things are gonna change around here. Yeah, I'm a fabricator, a welder. So things are gonna change around this house. You know what I'm saying? Not really. I My wife actually laughed at that text, like for real. So anyway, so what I've done is I've done some of the welding myself. So this bike is gonna go, this is the smoke out chopper. If you don't know, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, you know what the hell I'm talking about. So this bike has to go to Brynn at Quality Handmade Cycles next week for some pretty welds. I can make metal stick to metal and stay on there, but it ain't going to be pretty, you know, that kind of thing. And what I need is uh, my tank bungs put in the in the frame, and I just, I want a nice bead, and I won't do that. It'll be like, it's not going to look very special, or it will look very special. So Bryn is going to put a nice bead around there, make it look nice, and put my tank bungs in. He's also going to make my seat pan, something I'm completely unqualified to do. He essentially makes a steel frame if you will for a king and queen you'll see i'll document all this stuff later but but he's a master at that stuff it looks fantastic and i wouldn't even try so what i'm doing yesterday actually what i'm doing yesterday what i did yesterday was mount the post i need to mount my tail light and license plate i'll show you that real quick so yesterday i did that that peg right there that post uh welded it all the way around to the frame so essentially what that is is what the and there's still some work to be done to it so don't don't zoom in and judge don't do that all right because I still have to do some shaping and all that sort of stuff. Can't use Bondo. I don't want to use Bondo. There's certain kinds of Bondo you can use for powder coat, but I don't want to do it. It'll crack sometimes. And again, it's all about it looking good in 15 years. So I want to do a little shaping. And the good thing about welding is you get a low spot, you eh, and then straighten her out. So that is the peg that the license plate and taillight mount are going to go to. Whoop. I've always loved that side mount look. I know some people hate it. I love it. I, I, I love it when there's no taillight or anything on the bike. And your taillight and license plate are just mounted to the side. I love that. So I'm doing that. Had to add that peg to give it a place to clamp onto. You can also do the axle. Somebody's already typing that. This axle has flats to go through the frame. And I, I don't like the placement right there, actually. So it's going to be a little lower. It'll look cool. So there's the peg for the license plate. It is straight, even though I'm standing funny. I've spent forever. And then the other thing I'm doing is changing out the... Um, I don't know what you'd call it. The tube that the screw goes through on a bracket that uh, holds your seat on. So this had one. Here it is. Actually, I already cut it off. This had one already from Paco, you know, welded on. But it's small diameter, and it's just, you know, I don't want to say chintzy because I'm not talking smack, but it's just not as big as, uh, for example, I ordered a bracket for the seat pan that Bryn's going to make from Lowbrow. I've already trashed my workstation, as you can see, but I'm using every one of these tools. And this is the bracket that will mount to the seat. And she'll rotate like that. Uh, also has the nice brass fittings to go into the new uh, pivot point, which is over here. And as you can see, it's quite a bit larger and beefier than what was on there. So what I did is I cut off the old one and I've ground that smoothish. And then this guy is going to go right there and I'm going to weld that on. The reason I'm comfortable doing this weld and those welds is A, the license plate clamp is going to be covering that peg. And B, this guy... Right, well, I can actually use my magnet here to hold it up straight. So line that up, and I'll no, I'm not just going to tack it on right now. I'm going to make sure it's perfectly straight. But you see, the fact that there was one on there before made a nice little valley. I'm going to make sure. So now I have to make six million measurements to make sure this is all straight. But then I can run a bead along here, and then take off the, the magnet and run a bead along there, and and then after powder coat, those brass fittings will get driven in. Let's not, let's be honest with a hammer. Um, and then the seat will have a nice place to sit on. So I wanted to have this done before I take it to Bryn, so he has something to work on. That, and originally I was thinking about having Bryn do these two things, but, like, that's kind of a waste of his talent. I can do this. So I um, haven't welded in forever, and the last time I did, one of the things I remember, or maybe not remembered, but sort of figured out is it was always with my grandfather forever ago, right? It was always MIG welding, and it was always a repair. My grandfather was a rice farmer when he was a kid, uh, was an engineer in Detroit for a while and retired, or not retired, spent the last 50 years of his life working for Mississippi River Transmission Corporation, which is the gas pipeline that runs 
well, it, it was that company, who knows these days, but it ran everywhere, right? So he would go out on the road and find problems with the gas pipeline and fix it and all that sort of stuff and run pump stations. And it's a brilliant dude. My grandfather could do anything. That's actually that generation, right? Anyway, um, fixing his boat trailer, you know, something on the outside of the shed. Like there's a crack, make it not be a crack anymore, that kind of stuff. And it was always just a little MIG welder and we eh, tack it on there and it'd be done. So... What I did was dig out my own MIG welder that I was sitting there going, have I used it yet? I, I don't remember. So that's the problem. You know, your grandfather said the settings are right. He knows exactly what he's doing. So you're just, you know, eh, eh, and you're done. It took me forever to get this thing dialed in <laughs> for what I needed to do with that yesterday. And that's part of the reason why it's so sloppy. Now that I've got, you know, the inches per minute, I, IPM, IP, IPS, IP, whatever the hell. The, the how fast the wire comes out and I've got the voltage right. I feel totally comfortable putting those two pieces on and save me a little money, Bren a little time, and then Bren can only, you know, spend time on what matters, which is the tank bungs and the uh, seat pan. So, all right. I guess let me turn the camera off here, so I need both my hands and all my brains to make sure this is straight. I think it is already, but we're going we're gonna to check and make sure, because, again, I have that valley from the old one that's already straight, right? So it's kind of sitting in there. So make sure it's straight, and then we'll just go bing, bang, boom around it a little bit, and then we'll run a bead that'll, let's be honest, look like popcorn and bird shit, and then I'll take a grinder and go eh, 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 and make it look perfect like it was never a problem. And I threw a breaker. Had a decent bead going too, damn it. <laughs> Well, that's enough of that. I'll be back when this is welded on. Now, I forgot to record again. So, shaping. So I don't know how that turned out. I had the GoPro on the bike and I don't know if the welder probably blows out the sensor and I don't know if there's any sound. So you might not have seen anything between the last thing and this, but trust me, it was brilliant if you didn't. I mean, it was like, Jesse James got nothing on me, you know? A lot of money, ability, big house, makes guns. It's got a lot. Anyway, so this is this is done. This is this is as good as I can make it. Again, I don't know if I've already said this or not. If I have, forgive me. Um, my powder coater really doesn't want any Bondo of any kind on the frame. Um, it'll do whatever I want. And I was talking to Chris um, Callen. He was like, there are Bondos you can use under powder, uh, liquid metal or something like that. Um, but I just, you know, I love the idea of it having no Bondo in it. Like, I, I like welds. I like seeing them and all that stuff. And actually, um, powder covers more than paint powder is plastic i don't even know how the process is but they the frame is going to be negative and the powder is going to be positive or the other way around but the powder is essentially just microscopic tiny little pieces of plastic of any color you want including candies and metal flake and all kinds of stuff these days and the frame's going to hang and it'll be again negative and the powder's positive or the other way around and they just fog the frame with the powder and the powder because they're opposites sticks to the frame right? Uh, they sandblast it first, by the way, or sandblast the frame. Uh, and then it's going to stick to the frame, complete coverage. And then they put it in an oven at about 450, and all that powder melts into a plastic coating that's 
really tough, like way tougher than paint. And it does fill in a lot of little stuff. So it, it hides some welds a little bit. Uh, I've got some grind marks here that I didn't realize I'd made until I, yeah, until I was done. There's also some little divots in my weld. So I welded around it, built it up and ground it, welded up and ground it. And it's strong as hell. It's way, actually way overkill. But the powder is probably going to fill those little divots as well. Um, but here we are. So not a pro job, but to the touch, it's really smooth. You can see I got low spots. That's where the dark spots are. But again, the powder is probably going to fill those in. You probably don't even know they're there. And then there's brass um, bushings, I guess, that you would call it, that tap into either side. I don't think I want to put those in yet because of the powder coating process. I'd love to have that brass, which they're over there, have those, you know, even though you'll never see them because the bracket goes over them, to have those not powder coated. So I'm not going to have them coated. I'm going to leave it like this. And then when I get it back, I'll tappy tappy those in. And, uh, and that'll just look nice. It'll look a little more finished. Uh, powder, again, is probably going to fill a lot of this in. Uh, it's going to fill in all this stuff, probably a lot of this. It really does come back. You'll see welds, don't get me wrong, but it comes back because it's melted plastic. It fills in low spots. So there you go. That's the end of my work. I mean, I got my you know, plate mount on. That guy's on. The only other bits of welding are the tank bungs and the seat pan. And then that's it, you know, like uh, there ain't nothing else to do to this guy. Uh, after the seat pan, it'll go straight to Jeffrey Phipps. So Jeff can put the seat cover on so we can make sure that, you know, room for this bolt and here and, uh, and everything's just right. And there's, there's clear, you know, clearance, clearance. And then the seat will come off. It'll all come down and it'll go to paint and powder. So that's the plan. Today is Friday, April 12th. I'm going to drop this video whenever I can get it done and uploaded. Um, but tonight's live stream night. And if you don't know what that is, you need to come hang out. Um, sit on the couch, grab a drink or lots of them. And we're going to sit and drink knowing probably us bourbon and coke and shots of fireball and then we just tell stories and talk about stuff my dad's in the side chat you know like and then after a couple hours go by a couple buddies will jump on probably the wife will pass out and then we'll really make asses of ourselves so if you got no plans on this friday night again april 12th 8 p.m eastern so five o'clock for you californians um come hang out man we have a good time so that's it thanks for watching this stuff i really appreciate it love you all to death take care of each other we'll talk real soon